Legal Aid Informational Video Series, Part 4, Sexual Harassment and Violence Against Women's Act. Scenario 1, Quid Pro Quo Sex Harassment. Landlord Larry was a charismatic property manager. One day, Tiffany showed up to Landlord Larry's office with an application to rent a studio apartment. Landlord Larry then told Tiffany that her application looked great, but that he would not rent the studio to her unless Tiffany went out on a date with him first. Tiffany stated that she was uncomfortable and politely declined Landlord's request. Landlord Larry grew upset and said, The only way I will let you live here is if you go out with me. I'll make sure you don't regret it. I'm a man every woman wishes she had. Tiffany refused Larry's advances again and left the property. Tiffany then decided that this apartment was not a place she felt comfortable living in. She immediately started looking for another apartment elsewhere. Were Landlord Larry's comments to Tiffany in violation of the Fair Housing Act? Yes, sexual harassment in housing is a form of sex discrimination prohibited by the Fair Housing Act. Here, Landlord Larry's advances are considered quid pro quo harassment because he was requiring Tiffany to submit to an unwelcome request to engage in sexual conduct as a condition of obtaining housing. Therefore, Larry violated the Fair Housing Act on the basis of sex discrimination. Scenario 2, Violence Against Women's Act, FAWA Newly engaged Tracy and Martin live in public housing that is federally funded. Unfortunately, the couple grew apart and Martin was unfaithful. Tracy asked Martin to move out. Martin left the unit, but kept his name on the lease. Over the next few weeks, Martin kept showing up to the unit to taunt and threaten Tracy. He told her, you will regret it if you call the police. Afraid, Tracy spoke with landlord Dan and asked if she could get an emergency transfer to a unit because she believed Martin was stalking and harassing her. Tracy explained that Martin's actions were escalating and she felt that she was in immediate danger of being harmed. Landlord Dan flat out said no and walked away. The next day, Landlord Dan gave Tracy a notice. The notice stated that the property does not tolerate violence and therefore the couple is in violation of the house rules and Landlord Dan threatened to immediately evict both Tracy and Martin. Can Landlord Dan deny an emergency transfer and threaten eviction for domestic violence? No. Under the Violence Against Women Act, VAWA, public housing agencies and other housing programs receiving federal funding must adopt an emergency transfer plan. Here, Landlord Dan should have made an emergency transfer plan and allowed an internal transfer when a safe unit is immediately available for Tracy. Accordingly, Landlord Dan violated Tracy's rights under VAWA. Scenario 3. Early Termination Due to Domestic Violence Steve and Victoria recently married and moved into a two-bedroom apartment with landlord Debbie. The couple signed a one-year fixed-term lease effective July 2023 to July 2024. In September 2023, the couple started to have marital issues and began fighting often. The fights escalated over time and by the end of September, Victoria desperately called the police on Steve. Steve was arrested for domestic abuse of Victoria and she was awarded a temporary restraining order, TRO, against Steve. Victoria immediately turned in a copy of the TRO to landlord Debbie and asked if she could terminate her lease early. Victoria explained that she wanted to move away from Steve for her own protection. Landlord Debbie seemed apathetic but ultimately told Victoria that she was unable to break her lease early just because of a TRO and that Victoria would be held responsible for the remainder of the lease if she chose to move out early. Desperate and fearful that Steve would continue to harm Victoria, she immediately moved out of the unit and relocated to an undisclosed location. Steve stopped paying the rent but remained in the unit when he found out Victoria left him. Landlord Debbie continued to send angry text messages to Victoria and constantly reminded Victoria she was still responsible for the rent even though she moved out of the unit. Can Landlord Debbie deny a request to terminate the lease early because of domestic violence? And can she hold Victoria responsible for the remaining rent on the lease term? No. If the tenant, a co-tenant, or a household member is the victim of domestic violence, harassment, sexual assault, or stalking, the tenant or co-tenant can terminate their lease early by providing written notice of termination to the landlord under HRS 52180. Please note that the notice should be given at least 14 days prior to the early termination date specified in the notice. 
If you believe you have been a victim of housing discrimination, you can contact the Legal Aid Society of Hawaii at 808-536-4302 to determine if you qualify for legal assistance.